No matter your age, it's never too late to learn something new. Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer. I'll be turning 30 years old this year and although I would like to believe that I have a well-established career and title, I'm going back to school. This might be clickbaity, but the school isn't technically attending a large university, but rather I'll be taking online classes so I can acquire my professional engineer license. So if you don't know what this is, here's a quick recap. This license is different from a bachelor's degree or a master's degree from a university. You can obtain a bachelor's or a master's degree in any engineering field that you want and get a job right away, but you aren't considered a professional engineer until you acquire this license. Long story short, in order for you to acquire this license, you need at a minimum a bachelor's degree from an accredited university that says you graduated from an engineering field. You need to pass the fundamentals exam and apply for an engineer in training certificate. And then after working a couple of years and passing the professional engineering exam, then you can go on to acquire this prestigious professional engineer license. Lots of explanation there, but in the end, I just wanted to emphasize that I will be taking online classes so I can acquire this professional engineer license. After graduating from a graduate school back in like 2017, it feels really weird going back to school. I thought I was done with it forever, like no more cramming or studying for tests and like doing those late night homeworks. But I'm back for it and you know what's different from then to now is that I purposely chose to do it. I'm leaving my comfy life and going back to that stressful college life. So with that being said, I just wanted to bring up some key few points that I feel people within this age range might feel when it comes to going back to school. I know they'll feel uncomfortable because it's like they're taking a step back in life when they thought they had it all figured out, you know, after graduating college and then they started their career. So I just want to talk about those points. First is the decision to go back. Although it's never too late to learn something new, I just had to wonder, for what reason am I going back? It's not like I'm exploring some new hobby or venturing out to some new field to learn something that is fun and enjoyable. It's straight up school where I have to learn or like relearn all the concepts of math and engineering. I'll be forced to do the homework and go through all the struggles that I've dealt with when I was younger. The reason I'm going back is because there are a lot of benefits to getting this PE license. The main thing is pretty selfish to me, but you know, I shouldn't beat around the bush. It's that I'll get paid more. This license pretty much guarantees a pay increase for anyone who has it and because it's so rare, you're usually the last one to get fired or like the first one on the list to be looked at if you're like switching jobs. Ultimately, it's for the job security and the pay increase. Obviously, you're not always guaranteed a pay increase, but at least for my job, it is a guaranteed pay increase. Second is adapting to the new intense academic environment. I used to just work at my nine to five job and then once I get home, I can relax. I don't have any kids or anything that would cause me to have any stress, so I can just do whatever I want when I finish my job. But with these classes now, once I'm done with work, now I have to do more work. I have to listen to that online lecture and you know, once I'm done with that, I have to finish the homework and basically stay on task and disciplined every step of the way up until my date of the exam. Now why would anyone want to leave that comfy life? I know it's going to be hard, especially since I haven't been in school for a while, but that's where my motivation and drive will have to just keep me focused the entire time. The third point is social dynamics. I don't have an issue with this since it's an online class, but it might be an issue for people who are attending in-person classes. During college, you might have been like a super outgoing person or behave differently than you are today. You went from extremely outgoing and taking on everything on your plate to not just being like a homebody who likes to keep to themselves. So you're not as adventurous as you used to be. But now that you have to go back in person to attend classes and actually meet with people, do you know how to act in front of people? I was always an introvert, so like I've always kept to myself and been the quiet one. And I honestly never cared what people thought about me being an introvert. But I can imagine just thinking how I'd fit in, especially if I'm older than everyone else. It might make me feel uncomfortable or just like left out in general. When all of your peers or classmates around you are just so young or like now within your age range, it could be hard to approach them or find like common things to talk about besides just your class. But again, because it's online, I get to study at my own pace with their pre-recorded lectures and it's not something that I have to worry about. This would only affect people who are attending live, in-person classes. Next on the list of major concerns is family and other personal commitments. Again, this one doesn't affect me as much because I don't have any kids. This mostly applies to people who have like a whole family to be responsible for. My only commitment right now is just to maintain my current workload at my job, you know, still be able to work out and do the few things that I enjoy. And all of that doesn't really take the whole day for me and I don't need to constantly look out for anyone else besides me. 
But if I did have to do that, I would probably be really stressed out and you know, just having to maintain that discipline and time management every hour of my life to make sure that I could actually juggle everything. So thank goodness I don't have to really worry about that too much, but for all the others who have these type of commitments, you know, kudos to you. I have the most utmost respect for you. Next is staying the course and maintaining discipline. Since I haven't been in school for a while, I've lost my studious motivation and drive to continue learning something. I don't have classmates around me in person who would push me to keep going forward. It's all online and at my own pace. So it's only me who is pushing myself and making sure that I actually stay on top of things. And really, again, the only thing pushing me is my first point, which is really selfish of me, just like basically monetary. Which brings me to my next point, which is money struggles. Because I've been working practically ever since I graduated, I've been able to save up. As I got promoted or switched jobs to increase my pay, I didn't really have to struggle about it too much, besides maybe just that one layoff. So I'm doing okay financially. I'm not rich, but I'm also not in poverty. And also I have enough saved for in case if anything ever goes that bad, I can still at least manage to float by. I know classes and education in the US is super overpriced and crazy expensive, but this class only costs like $1,200. So it's definitely worth the investment compared to something like a four year college tuition. So this initial $1,200 investment could potentially get me a $10,000 a year increase once I pass the exam. So to me, it's really worth it. Lastly is having a good support system. One day I'm gonna face burnout or just be too tired to keep studying. No matter how good the end result might be for me, the journey is like a whole different beast. I mean, it's easier said than done as with many things. No matter your reason for going back to school and no matter how strong your conviction or discipline is, you will eventually face a wall that you can't really surpass without the help of others. Again, I want to reiterate the good thing about my situation is that I'm not put in a stressful situation where I have to look up for a family. I have a loving family who supports what I do. And you know, if anything ever goes wrong, at least I can always rely on them. And also the class wasn't too expensive to begin with. So if I were to stop completely, you know, even though I paid for it, it would have been just a total loss of $1,200. So I'm prepared if ever I had to, to stop the exam and just move on with my life because you know, something else took priority of it. And so here we are today. Currently I'm about two weeks into the class and I have like another 24 weeks left to go before the subscription to that online class ends. It shouldn't take me the whole 26 weeks, but I opted for just the longer duration because I don't know what my life will have for me. The class can be done in about 10 weeks. So if there are people who have done it in like half the time as my 26 weeks, then I don't really have anything to complain about. In the end, this opportunity is a blessing for me. I could only positively impact my future career. It would give me a pay raise and will only increase over time as I further my career. It's reimbursable by my job, so my job is paying for it. And it will allow me to increase my learning capabilities that could only help me in the future. I don't see any negatives to doing this besides just having to suck it up and endure through the course until the very end. So that's my life update. I hope you guys enjoyed the full transparency. If anything, I hope that this encourages you to pursue higher education too, so long as it is reasonable, affordable, and attainable to your capabilities in a current life situation. I hope to pass this exam the first time this year, and I'll be, keep you updated if and when I do eventually pass. That's all for the video. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye.